Hi, I'm Chris McCrum, and this is our poster, the current state of the margin of stability for the ISPGR conference. Um, this is a short summary video where I'm not going to go into too much detail on the, the content because this is, well, firstly on the poster and we really want to trigger discussion uh, with this poster, um, but I will give some context and, and background to this work. Um, so the three of us, Caroline, Tom and I, are um, all users of the margin of stability and have been for, for some time. Um, and through this experience, we've um, learned a lot about the, the applications of the concept and also ourselves made some kind of common pitfalls along the way in how we're using it or, or um, communicating results and, and so on. And increasingly, we also see that the margin of stability is becoming more and more uh, applied in, in, in publications. Um, this has various reasons, but partly to do with the fact that it's actually relatively easy to calculate and has become even a kind of a plug and play stability metric that people can very easily uh, get from, from their gate data. Um, of course, this uh, may come with the issue that um, people can easily get these values without really understanding um, the, the underlying principles. And uh, in this well, project, we basically want to give some context to the margin of stability, its development, and also um, help people see the, the implications and issues related to all the various choices and applications that can be made with the margin of stability. So you can see along the bottom, we show briefly the conceptual evolution of how it came to be, um, the most recent being in, in 2016. Um, and on the, on the right side, you see, for example, data showing uh, the direct implications of the base of support boundary choice and the gate event choice in analysis. You can see that the margin of stability value can vary quite substantially depending on when you take the measure and based on what you define as the base of support boundary, whether this is a, a marker on the foot um, or center of pressure, for instance. Um, and this both in medial lateral and anterior posterior directions. So these things uh, should be carefully considered. Uh, you also see some bullet points on common deviations on related issues. Um, so there have been many deviations of the margin of stability. Um, and these usually come with specific considerations. For example, using a reduced marker set influences how the center of mass is estimated. Uh, walking on a moving surface like treadmill or with various perturbations the change in velocity, therefore, needs to be accounted for. And yeah, you, you can see all of the other considerations there. And then what we hope will be clear take home messages are our recommendations, which are here briefly listed on the left. So here we're talking about the specific calculation, the direction it should be calculated in, how one can define the boundary of the base of support and uh, communicate that, um, issues related to the estimation of the center of mass, also the timing of the when you take the margin of stability. And finally, the fact that the margin of stability is very often used as a general indicator of global gate stability, but this is not really what it's suited for. And so we give a brief explanation of how you might rather think about it. Um, as I said at the beginning, we hope this triggers some discussion, um, both from people new to using the concept and people who have used it for a longer time. So we look forward to your questions and comments, either in the online system or in person. So thanks for watching.